welcome to the Sanji Land Show where everybody's upside down. And today I have a cat with me. I have the honor to talk to Sam today, who is a badass, I feel like everything, like your main thing is pole dance, right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, when I first discovered her on Instagram, I guess three, four years ago, actually I discovered you for your handstands. Yep. I post more handstands on Instagram, I think, than pole, so. Oh, interesting. Okay. Maybe. Well, because you can do handstands everywhere. That's true. So it's easier to... Be in the airport and do a handstand. <laughs> That's a, a good point. I never thought about that. <laughs> but tell us a little bit about your story with handstands. Has it always just been like a part for your pull to supplement it? or? So I did gymnastics when I was a kid. So there was like some handstands involved in gymnastics, but nothing like serious. And then when I started competing pull is when I was like, oh, I need to work on my handstands again. Is um, it like a requirement? No, it's... For pole, when you compete, there's generally two poles. One is on spin, one is on static, and you have to move between the two as well as move up and down them. And I don't identify as like a dancer or like my movement doesn't feel great if I'm dancing between poles. And I was like, oh, I can handstand and kind of do yoga moves between poles instead. And so that kind of became my thing. And I was like, oh, I can make this into something. And so now for me, I have to have handstands in every pole routine I do. Um, as just in general too. Um, but it was kind of a, like, that was the, the starting point to kind of get me back into it. I feel like you've influenced people in pole maybe to do more. I hope so. <laughs> I hope I've influenced people everywhere. Um, I think handstands are good for everybody. Yeah. Honestly, like being inverted, even if handstands don't work, just getting upside down is good for your brain, for your body and for coordination. So how hard, hard has it been for you? Cause you have long arms. Are they consistent? I would not. I still don't officially say I have a one arm. Um, I saw I, one on Instagram the other day. So like, oh, wow. in my mind, and maybe I'm just harder on myself than I need to be, but like I would like to have 10 seconds consistent returning 
every single time I do it, or most of the time that I do it, to say I have a one arm. I can sort of do a one arm ish most of the time on my right. My right arm is is starting to to play nicely. Mm -hmm. Um, But so like for people that don't handstand, it's very impressive for people that can actually do one arms are like, you should try harder. And so it's it's kind of like a weird place to be kind of stuck in between, but it's definitely something I've been working on and off for a number of years. Um, It's more clicking nowadays because I definitely have a little bit more time to, to mess with them during the pandemic. A little bit more time. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So how do you divide your training? Is it pull and handstands only or do you do other things as well? Um, it's mostly pull and handstands and then I've been training straps again, um, which is really fun. I used to train straps uh, probably like 2015, 16, 17 pretty consistently and then I stopped doing it for a long time. So I'm starting to do that again, which is really fun. Um, on occasion, I go and like hang on a straight bar and do like bar conditioning and stuff. So I really like that. Do you enjoy that? I do. I think it's fun. It's a lot of compression, like skin the cat stuff. And it's just like, I feel like it complements pole and handstand. So it's, it works well for both. Um, I honestly haven't been training as much as I'd like to. And I'm starting to try to implement training more again um, because I teach a lot. And so a lot of my energy ends mm-hmm. up going to teaching. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, I bet it does. I, I, just, I just took... I have to tell the people I just took one of her <laughs> classes and it's like a comedy show. It's amazing. And you talk you, the whole time. <laughs> well, that and you do the whole class. Yeah. Like you're moving yeah. constantly. So for me, always as a student, I really liked and was more drawn to teachers that did everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm a visual learner. So I like to watch somebody do something and then I can pick it up quicker. Versus somebody just tells me what to do. It works, but it doesn't work as much. And I get inspired by watching. So because of that, it's the same way that I like to teach. And you've been mainly self-taught, right? On everything you do. I mean, yes, for the most part. So so I pole dancing, I kind of did, I self-taught and then eventually started taking classes like way, way later down the road. Um, For handstands, like I said, I did gymnastics as a kid, but that doesn't really like focus on handstands so much. Mm -hmm. Like you kind of do them, but it's not like the main thing. Um, and then I got back into just kind of training myself, but then I started taking some classes here and there. I lived in Boston for a while and I went to, uh, Esh, um, aerial arts for a little bit there. And there's mm-hmm. a couple of people that taught handstands. And so I took some handstand classes here and there. And then the same thing when I moved to New York, like there's a couple random people that were teaching and I'd be like, Oh, I'll take a class here and there. And then I started teaching and honestly, from teaching, you learn a lot. Mm -hmm. right of like what works what doesn't work and also showing and demoing what works and what doesn't work Mm -hmm. um but I actually do think it's really important to continue taking classes from different people and Mm -hmm. working on stuff on your own and then taking another round of classes or things like that workshops um I've definitely trained with a lot of really amazing people throughout the years Mm -hmm. um I feel like probably if I had to pick like one teacher it would be um Yuval um Elan who is in France and he does like handstand camp. And I'm so mm-hmm. sad that I didn't get to go the last two years. Uh, Cause I went yeah, two years were, previously. I saw that. I yeah. And it's like, yeah. it's so much fun to just get to be with people for five days that want to train for mm-hmm. six hours a day. And that's all you're doing. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Oh yes. And like, I can forget like all the other responsibilities that I have for a couple days and like, just focus on me. Yeah. And so like, that's been really fun to be able to do. And hopefully next year I'll be able to get back to it. Was that at his place and home in Paris? It's, um, he's out just outside of Paris. It's in his, the village that he lives in. Um, and it's this like, I don't even know what it is. It's like a theater spot. It's like an old farmhouse scenario. And so because there's no one there during the summer, he can rent it out pretty easily. Oh, cool. And so you, we lived in like bunk beds in the facility and then trained and everything. So it was cool. Oh, nice. And like went to, to his house for dinner and like had a big group dinner every night. Yeah, so that, was that really, sounds like heaven. That was really cool. Handstand heaven. Yeah, it's it's super fun. But circling back to how you divide your training, like how how much how do you say that in English? How many percent of of your overall training do handstands actually take in? It do you de- just know how to do them? It depends, honestly. So I actually don't train as much as I want to. Um, I 
do a morning practice every day. And in the end of the morning practice, there is one handstand hold for time. I usually stall her, hold for a minute or a little bit longer than a minute and then come down. That might be my only handstand, except that I teach handstands like four days a week. Okay. And so then I'm doing more handstands and demoing, but it's not really for me, right? Mm-hmm. Cause like the stuff that I'm showing, I'm not really staying in for long and it's like mostly more beginner and immediate. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's a lot of demoing things, which is good to get some of the basics in, but I'm not practicing necessarily for myself. Yeah. Um, over pandemic, uh, I had two groups of people that we would Zoom handstands together. Um, so that was really nice because it was helpful for just to be motivated and like everybody would maybe do their own thing, but we'd all like talk a little bit of shit and then everybody do handstands and like back oh, and forth. Like, like a training group. Yeah, like a training group. And so oh, I had like cool. two separate groups of people and some of them overlapped that I would train with for a little while on Zoom when we weren't allowed to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. And then when we started going out again, um, there's like a park near my house that I would meet people on Fridays. And then in the city on Wednesdays, we meet in Madison Square Park. And um, maybe it's just me and one other person or maybe like five people show up. So it's kind of random, but it's it's mm-hmm. a time to kind of train. It's not like super serious training. Or but like it's, it's kind of just jamming and like everybody, like sometimes we all work on different things and sometimes we'll get together and do like a leg choreo or something, depending on like who's in town and what's going on. Yeah. So like that's, that's honestly been my most, most of my training. Like it's not recently been like super, super focused, um, which is why I think like my progress hasn't been like a lot, even though it's, it's slowly kind of getting there. That's kind of nice, though, that you're still evolving. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of, like, the sequences and stuff that I do, I've been doing for years, but you can always make them better. Mm -hmm. You can always make them more intricate. You can stay up for longer. You can change and adapt different things. Mm -hmm. Uh, The focus might change. Um, The beginning of pandemic, my back kind of went out, and I couldn't stall her at all. And it, like, made me really sad, and so I had to do other things. And so I went back to, like, just hitting basics again. Mm -hmm. Like, different leg positions, tuck straddle full, head positions, tuck straddle full, and like really just focusing back on that stuff. And then as my back started feeling better, I started to work on stalders again. I still haven't done a lot of, um, like stalder to Mexican used to be one of my favorite sequences. I know I, been, you inspired me to work on that. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. It's a fun one. It's well, tricky. <laughs> I can't stalder, so I straddle press. That's okay. Mexican. Yeah. Not to full Mexican, just <laughs> straddle Mexican. But no, but any of it's interesting. So that's one of the things that I kind of lost um, over pandemic, just because like my shoulder also like has gone through some funky things, like mm-hmm. being with pole, like things happen. <laughs> so yeah. as through you work through injury, you kind of find other things to do while you can't do other things. And then you're like, oh, I'm focusing on this right now. And then you kind of like test the waters on something else and see how that goes again mm-hmm. and, and kind of play with stuff back and forth. I have to ask you now, because I heard on that other podcast that you were on that you have done pole for two decades is that right how old I have, are you I have done pole for two decades you're you look so uh, young that I I don't even think it's possible I'm turning 40 at the end of the year wow yeah <laughs> that's pretty the, end of the, the very end of the year is my birthday and so I'll be 40 wow. this year yep so how, how can you describe how you're body has evolved do you feel the same age do you feel any different um honestly I would say pandemic fucked me up a little bit because I went from teaching and moving six days a week to then like sitting on a couch even though like I went on zoom pretty quick and started teaching in zoom and stuff like that it wasn't the same as getting out and traveling and meeting other people and Mm -hmm. a lot of my training has been jumping into other people's workouts or other people's sessions Oh, um, yeah. Instead of like my own focus. So I'll be like, oh, hey, I'm here. What are you doing today? I'll do your stuff. Uh-huh. And so that's been really fun. And then I didn't have that opportunity. So I feel like um, there was some regression. Um, mm-hmm. But now being back in it and starting to do and move a lot more and train cross training stuff and different ap- apparatus and things like that it makes it feel better again. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely think that like, I feel like I've been looking back through my Instagram videos and things like that. And I feel like 2017 was like my <laughs> glory year. Um, or like I was the most strong and the most flexible and like the least injured maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's real, but that's like, that's how you have it. In like in my mind, I like look at videos and I'm like, oh, I did that once it happened. And then I'm like, I'm going to try to do that again. And like trying to get back to that. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, like I definitely feel um, crankier with the weather. So uh-huh. like if it's rainy, 
and like gray, my body's like, no, meh. And you did used to have that? Not as much. Not as much. I feel like it's definitely one of the things, like, as I've gotten older, like, it's I'm more sensitive to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I mean, I get a lot of sleep and I eat pretty well. And I think that my morning practice kind of keeps me functioning. And so I think that those are important things that a lot of people don't necessarily take the time to really focus on and should uh, for longevity. I think like uh-huh. sleeping, sleeping a lot, like not too much, but like getting a good amount of sleep and recovery really does make a difference with how much you can yeah. continue functioning and training. Yeah. That's what I noticed now. This is going to sound crazy, but I'm 31 and I feel it now. Like I feel that my body is so much older now than compared to three years ago. Okay. That's why I was asking. I mean, I think it goes through peaks and valleys. I also, so through all of my twenties, I drank like a lot and I stopped drinking. So you, you worked and so that made as, a difference with my body. You worked in a strip club, I right? Did. I did. Which is also super crazy. Like what a transition. I don't know. To me, it's not that crazy because it's just like the existence that I lived. Um, it was fun. Like I had a good run of it. You know what I mean? So it was, it was a different time for sure. I didn't do as much fitness then. Um, and I drank a lot more and I stayed up at night and didn't sleep as much. And so in all honesty, I think I was, when I transferred out of the nightlife and drinking and started doing fitness and not drinking, and sleeping more and taking better care of my body, I actually feel like I was in better shape in my 30s than I was in my 20s. Like hands down, like way, way better shape. And I feel like there's a lot of people that I know that are 40 plus and they're killing it. You know what I mean? And so it's interesting to see like how things change and how you might modify based on how your body is functioning. But like if you take care of yourself and you keep consistent training and you do a lot of the I think it's uh, also like really having the basics, mm-hmm. like focusing on foundation really helps to build everything better and bigger. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that you do your morning routine. I mean, what does that look like? Um, right now it's uh, about a half hour. Uh-huh. Um, it's changed and morphed throughout the years. So like when I started, it was just like foam rolling and like hanging over my legs because I had back pain. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of, as I started getting more into yoga, started getting a little bit more yoga. And then I started getting into more fitness. It started being more like push-ups and stuff. So, so it changes over time. Now, I mean, it's adapted. Um, right now I'm doing like some spinal waves, uh, a little bit of breath work, um, FRC kind of joint articulation circle, mm-hmm. car stuff. And then uh, five minutes of planks mm-hmm. where I'm moving through some things in the planks. Uh, and then there's like a little yoga sequence that has been pretty consistent throughout the years, but changes on occasion. Um, and then, uh, there's like some push-ups and some V sits and that, and then, uh, <laughs> I end a little bit of stretching and then I end with a handstand. Um, and then if I'm by myself, that's usually how I end. If my boyfriend does it with me, uh, we, I gaze meditate for two minutes or three minutes, oh, cool. which is actually really cool. Uh-huh. So it's, it's definitely something if you haven't ever eye gazed, Never um, done it. It's it's fun. How does it work? It's you just literally stare at somebody's eyes <laughs> for however long you want. Um, I think like a minute or two minutes is a really good place to start because it's not really that much time. Mm-hmm. Find a comfortable seat. See what comes up. You're allowed to blink. Yeah, you're allowed to blink. <laughs> um, <laughs> hypothetically, you're allowed to look away if you need to. A lot of people have a hard time with eye contact. Uh-huh. So it's interesting to like I'm doing it with my partner, and so that is a different like feeling than if I do it with a complete stranger. Um, I using is something that I started doing with uh, yoga training. Um, one of the yoga trainings that I did, one of my teachers is really into this like eye gazing situation. And I was like, oh shit. And it's interesting because if you do it with different people, different feelings come up in your uh-huh. own self. Because a lot of it is really your, the person kind of mirrors what you're feeling to some degree and you feel, mirror what they're feeling to some degree. Uh-huh. And so it's different. Sometimes you laugh, sometimes you cry, sometimes you just sit there. Um, I feel nothing. So it's, it is a kind of interesting to, to see how that happens. That sounds so interesting. I've never heard of it before. Do you know where it comes from? Nope. Never mind. No, I have no idea. There's also um, one pole dancer, uh, Marian Kramp, who is like a really famous pole dancer. And she, in some workshops, has done eye gazing as well. I think it's just a lot to do with uh, human contact and intimacy. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people have a hard time 
keeping eye contact. And well, so it's something interesting now, to do. Yeah. Well, everything that's happened in the last one and a half years. Yeah. Are we going towards two years? I'm say two years. Oh, God. Yeah. It's like we, we all need to do that kind of. Yeah. Those simple practices. Yeah. Um, but even regardless if you're, I guess you're not, I feel like sitting and meditating, even if it's just for like a minute or two, just focusing in on breath is a really good thing to do mm-hmm. just to kind of ground yourself. And I've also noticed that like a lot of people who have, who look like they're, they have their shit together. Uh-huh. <laughs> maybe they do, maybe they don't. Um, but a lot of teachers and people that I follow and I'm interested in like what they do have, I've heard them on different podcasts and things like that. And they always talk about meditation and finding like a sitting practice of some sort. Um, and so I think that's interesting that a lot of people kind of connect with that and give them a moment to like tune out from the day mm-hmm. or to focus in on something else. Maybe it's yourself. Maybe it's on somebody who you're with. So it's definitely something interesting. I've heard so many people say also that handsets are kind of like a meditation. Yeah. Is that for you? I definitely think so. Yeah. Handstands are patience. <laughs> Um, a lot of patience. If you, I have very little patience, but I'll put a little bit of patience into my hands. <laughs> um, it seems like you naturally just can do everything. Like, tell me about your stalter press. Did you? I feel like we kind of did them in gymnastics as a kid. I don't know if I actually had them or not, but in my mind, I did as a kid. And then I was like, oh, I can kind of do this. And then you just took them with you, pretty mm-hmm. much. And like, I mean, I didn't do anything for a long time. But then when I started training handstands again, I was like, oh, let's see if I can do this kind of stuff. And I have the compression. Mm-hmm. Um, And so I think that that helps, like the flexibility definitely helps. Mm -hmm. And then doing other strength work, like doing calisthenic stuff, doing like front levers and back levers and stuff like that also kind of transfer into being able to to assist all the I think for sure. And so it was something that, uh, so my shoulders are very not flexible and my hips are very flexible. Um, And it's definitely something that like I work on both, but I've found it way easier to make my hips more flexible than my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, I started doing more things that I was like, I'm going to use what I have, my compression and the ability to like hip flexors lift my leg up to my head and like not worry about it and use that to my advantage. Mm -hmm. Um, Not that I don't practice on my shoulders as well, but there's definitely some stuff that's harder. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, like a pike press or like just holding a tuck handstand. Versus like it's some so funny people, you say that. As some people just chill in them. And I'm uh-huh. like, oh, I'm pushing. I will. Like so hard. Yeah. What's your compensation mechanism? Do you planch then or do you bend your elbows? I bend my elbows. Um, I actually Mexican in my tongue, mm. even though it doesn't look like I'm doing that at all. It, but in my mind, I'm like, ah, I'm really trying to like push up and open. Uh-huh. And it probably is just like, oh, you're in a good line. <laughs> So that's so reassuring to hear you're human. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, clearly I'm going to do the stuff. Like if I'm showboating something, mm-hmm. I'm going to do the stuff that I'm good at. I'm going to be like, yeah, look at my thing. I can do this thing. Cool. Um, but I definitely do work on the stuff that I suck at as well. I just don't post it as often because I don't find it that interesting. It's like, here's the grind. We're just doing, we're just doing them again. Um, so do you get into that zone where you're really after a certain skill and you grind it out? Um, sometimes. Cause it, I guess the picture that you're like, you do a little bit of this and then you do a little, I, bit, I have a little bit more like all over the place with stuff, which I can relate to because that's what I'm like. And it's led me to slow progress, Yeah, but it's enjoyable. Like I mean, it's way more fun. I'm not stressed about my progress. Because I don't have like an end date that I need to get something done by. It's Mm -hmm. like, I'll just keep working on it and it'll keep evolving. You know what I mean? And so like, I'm not like, oh, I need to get this by this date. Like, I don't, I don't care. I will eventually get there. Um, I do sometimes wonder if I really applied myself. (laughs) I was like, oh, because I have a couple of friends and students that have passed me that practice that listen to my advice <laughs> and practice every day um and work on stuff and they it, I've seen a lot of really amazing games like some of my my handstand babies are doing some crazy stuff and it's That's awesome. amazing oh yeah it's great um and then I'm like well I don't have this because I don't practice it enough mm-hmm. and I know that and it's okay and so I don't get like super frustrated like oh I should have this by now it's like well I should have this by now if I practice five days a week and I do it maybe like once every other week mm-hmm that's the progress I'm going to get. 
but it's still like moving towards it and I'm fine with it. So, yeah. um, but yeah, sometimes there's definitely, I do definitely notice like I'll get in the zone, like, Oh, I'm going to try, like, I like more with sequencing. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going to try this. And then I look at the video. I'm like, Oh, I'm going to try it again. And I'm, oh, I'm like, I'm like, oh, later in the day, I'm like, oh, I didn't really do that much. And then I look at my video and I'm like, oh, I did it 15 times. (laughs) I guess I didn't do it. Uh Um, Or like stuff, even if I'm doing like an easy sequence, Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, it wasn't, I could do it better. And then I'll do it again. And I'm like, oh, I could do it better. And then do it again. So like for me, a lot of my training comes down to as weird as it is, like videoing myself, seeing what it looks like and then doing it again and trying to get the aesthetic that I want with how it feels in my body so it connects. Uh Which is so interesting because you just said that you don't see yourself as a dancer, but that's kind of okay. Like so dancing, isn't it? It is like dancing, and I can dance. I'm gonna air quote dance, but like I wasn't a contra- like a trained contemporary dancer, or ballet dancer, or modern or jazz or anything like that. Like I did a little bit of ballet, and then I chose gymnastics, mm-hmm. and I feel like I'm like really awkward <laughs> in my own like upper body because I'm so much shoulders to ears and rounded. So like. I feel like all the dancers have this like, uh, like long Wait, carriage. You're doing it right I can now. get it, but I feel really <laughs> awkward doing it. Gotcha. So yeah. it's something though that I don't practice. Mm-hmm. So again, if I want it, and I take dance classes here and there and do other random things and stuff like that, but because I don't give the time to make it better, it doesn't get better and it doesn't feel better in my own body. Mm-hmm. I would rather do handstands. I would rather do a pole trick. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's, you know, it's again, where you apply yourself into things and like, can I look dancey? Absolutely. Do I like dancing on my hands more? Yes. Like I will like dance. It will be great. I think you're super graceful. Upside down. In, in your hands. Upside down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's actually what I like about you. So yeah. It's fun. Really pretty. It's a fun, it just, I don't know. Like one of the things I really like actually about Madison Square Park that we go to on Wednesdays, not as much anymore, but there used to be this jazz band. They're, they now go to the other end of the park where there's more people, um, would play music. And like, I like to hear music that I don't necessarily know or isn't my choice and then move around to it. However, like I hear the mm-hmm. beats and stuff like that. So it's kind of fun to do stuff like that sometimes, put on music and just kind of dance around and like see what sequences happen because of that. Um, when you look at your life, and you're, <laughs> this is going to be a I question. question. my life. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. okay. Um, um, and you think about what you thought you were going to become later. Nope. Never did. did you ever think about that? Nope. And what you're now? Nope. <laughs> Are you so in the moment? Um, it's weird. I don't know. Like, I don't, I'm sure, like, as a kid, I wanted to be something, but I don't remember ever wanting to be anything. Like, it wasn't like a, oh, I should do this. Um, oh. And... I don't know. Like I never, I never had like a plan for myself necessarily. And I went to like alternative high school. We went camping a lot and kind of allowed me to, I don't know, be more creative, I guess. Um, after high school, I didn't go to college. I, I got applied to a school and then ended up going on a program to Israel for a couple of years and like wandering around Europe and cool traveling and then realized just, I don't know, like, Oh, this works. I can do this now. And then I kind of started doing that. And then I moved to Boston. I was like, I'll keep doing this for a while. And then like, when that kind of started running its course, somebody's like, do you want to teach pole? And I was like, no. And they were like, you're going to do this. And I was like, okay. Is that how it happened? Pretty much. Yeah. Wow. A friend of mine was teaching at a studio and like needed somebody to sub and she was like, you're going to do this. And I was like, no. And then she was like, you'll be fine. I was like, oh, God. And then, like, I realized <laughs> when I started teaching that I was good at teaching. And I was like, oh, people don't understand how to do this. And I do. And I can see it. And I can fix that. Uh huh. And then it kind of just went from there. And that's kind of how I ended up in New York. Like, I used to come down and train at Body and Pole, which is the pole studio that I still work at. Mm-hmm. And I would be like, I want to stay here. But, like wasn't right the opportunity and then they expanded and they needed instructors and they were like hey do you want to work here and I was like yes I do so I moved to New York and then it, it kind of just kept cool. evolving from there and so like we're here in Warrior Bridge right now mm-hmm. same kind of concept there was like friends kind of with Sean in passing was always like I can sub a class if you need me to do that and then one day it kind of happened I was like oh great I'm teaching here now yeah and you're really great at it I love teaching yeah so it's, it's awesome that I've had the opportunity and I've met cool people that have studios and have been able to branch out to different places and see different people and stuff like that too. That's so, so fascinating that you never planned for anything. No. Like this. 
it's not, I don't know, like some people are very much into that. And I just, I never had like goals or aspirations so much, Mm -hmm. which like some people could see as a bad thing. But like, for me, it just, as things, as something happens or as something comes at me, I'm like, okay, let's do that. Or let's not do that. And that's kind of worked out for me so far. And I've, I've been able to manifest things also be like, so I want a job here. Hello. Hi. Great news. Like a year later, maybe it'll work out Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So that's been an interesting thing also. Super, yeah, it's <laughs> to me it's fascinating because you said you did gymnastics and then I did figure skating. Oh, time. nice. Okay, I did. Wait, I have, that's from a toe pick. Oh my god! <laughs> I did a tiny bit of ice skating as a child. Oh, cool! <laughs> it didn't go well. <laughs> well, yeah, you gotta practice it like all the other things. But how was it for you in gymnastics? Because for me, it was everything was so strict and everything was so. Like, I had a Russian coach who I love, and she's still like a mom to me. But you know, the mindset was so like. So my mom coached at the gymnastics place that I went to, so that way I could get like more classes or whatever. Um, but we also did like swimming as kids, and like I did a lot of like random sports that like everything. Like here's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Gymnastics was the main thing for me though, from probably when I was like. I don't know, young, like seven or eight, maybe until like I was like 11. Mm-hmm. So like, that's like the thing that I remember doing the most. Um, gotcha. and it wasn't really that serious. Well, it, okay. So I did ballet and gymnastics and then I either had to choose to go to point or choose to do gymnastics. So I was like, I'll do gymnastics. And then I started doing gymnastics and I competed at like a very low, low, low level. Um, and then it got to the point where like, I would have to get really serious about it and start going like five days a week. I was 11 and I was hitting puberty and was like, no, like my body started feeling achy and stuff like that. Like, and I'm not a very big person, but like I was bigger than the other kids at that point in my mind, like different body structure or whatever. And like, I don't know it, like I basically had to choose to like get very serious about gymnastics or like have Uh a child's life. And so I was like, I guess I'll have a child's life. And like, maybe it was, maybe it was different than that, but like, that's kind of how I remembered it. Uh Uh-huh. I should probably ask my mom. Like, how did that really go down? Um, but yeah, then like, I mean, my parents are very active. So like they still camp and hike and like go on river trips and stuff like this. So I grew up very active um, doing that kind of stuff, like rock climbing and snowboarding and mm-hmm. everything. So it wasn't like I quit gymnastics and I never moved again. It was like, okay, now I'm going to do all this other stuff. Yeah. Well, it seems like you're super authentic with the life you're living. It's like, that's you. I mean, and I don't know any other way. <laughs> but that's awesome. Because also, oh, Jesus, dear. what are you doing upstairs? Uh-huh. <laughs> Is that the handstand class? That might be the handstand class. <laughs> I feel like somebody went down. It's probably fine. Honestly, it's probably somebody kicking a wall. Is oh, what that is. <laughs> that makes sense. That was a loud bump. Uh, what was I saying? Authentic. Yes, when, <laughs> no, when, when, so you're like the kind of person who could, is a brand kind of also, like you're super special. I'm, I mean, special is a nice word for it. Um, <laughs> I think that, I don't know, I'm, I've never conformed, uh-huh. I guess. Like I've never felt the need to be like, oh, I need to be like the other people and I need to do this way or I need to do this because society tells me to. I'm just kind of uh-huh. like, I'm going to do this thing and like, if you don't like it, that's your problem, not mine. <laughs> I love that. Um, and I think that that does help because I've, I've never had issues with people telling me what to do or not do. And I'm just like, okay, well, I'll do it or I won't do it. And that being said, like, I tend to follow the rules to the most part, like kind of skirt the edge of things. Um, but I found ways of making things work the way I want to work. And I think a lot of it is like, I don't necessarily care what other people think. Like, yes, clearly I do. Like, you know, <laughs> but like you know what I mean like it's one of those things yeah. where I know not everybody's gonna like me and not everybody's gonna get my style and that's okay and those people don't need to and mm-hmm. the people that do are the people that I connect and draw to you mm-hmm. know um and it works with with jobs and things like that where it, in my mind like I'll talk a lot of shit but I can back it up uh-huh right so I I do I know that I'm a good teacher I like teaching and I like connecting with people and getting them to do weird movement and continue doing stuff and so because of that, because of, I feel like my enthusiasm for it, other people can feel that. Mm-hmm. And then totally. it connects you to the right people mm-hmm. in my mind. 
you know? Yeah. And I think a lot of it too, something that like, I mean, granted, I'm not making a ton of money. So like, if you want to make a lot of money, go to college, get a good job. But like, if you don't necessarily care about that and you just want to live your life, like there are ways to make money and find things that you like to do and share what you like to do with other people. And there's always a weird niche for it. And so you just have to figure out a way to live your lifestyle in accordance to the lifestyle that you make mm-hmm. for yourself. Amen. <laughs> Even though I'm not religious, but I have a, another question for you that I've been wondering. Is Star your actual name? Uh, Star is my middle name. Oh, Samantha it is? Star. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what's your real name? Samantha Star Cuomo. Oh. I don't use my last name because it's not as exciting, even though in New York it's kind of exciting right now, but not for the right reasons because the governor is not the greatest at the moment. He's the same last name as me. Oh. He got in trouble for harassing people. I should probably and know that. that. Oh. Um, <laughs> technically, we're related, but like not related. It's like one of those things that's the, the thing, like, especially mostly in New York, people will see my ID and they'll be like, are you related? And I'm like, not enough for that to matter. It's like too, <laughs> too distant. Too somehow. distant. Yeah. But people can sort of pronounce my last name here. So it's fine. But yeah, Samantha Star is a much cooler name. Um, and it works as like a persona and a brand. It's and I mean, I have the star tattoo, so that yeah. seems to help. And just kind of went with the theme. Is your whole body covered in stars? I have a number of them. Yeah. <laughs> There's like up my back, wrists, ankles, calves, a whole bunch of stuff. So cool. Yeah. I got them all done a long, like a while ago too. Like the beginning, the beginning of the 2000s. Mostly. <laughs> like the first, the first part of the, the decade. But <laughs> yeah. That seems like his little sister. That's when she was born and she's a grown up now. Yeah. So it's like, oh, Okay, we're here now. <laughs> it's always crazy, though, because there's, um, like, having pole dance for 20 years, I like like to bring it up every once in a while because there'll be students. And I can say this with handstands, but I've only been doing handstands seriously for 10 years, let's say. Mm-hmm. Um, and people get frustrated because they're like, oh, I should be better now. I should be doing this now. I'm like, we've been doing it for, like, two or three years. Like, chill. Like, <laughs> take a little bit of time to really, like, build into it. And, yeah, it's funny because I've definitely a couple times been like, so I've been pole dancing longer than you've been alive. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, like, crazy because, like, there's a whole new generation of people that are starting to do that. And it's it's neat. Um, yeah, hands dance, I can, I, I'll say I've been doing about 10 years seriously. So. And everything you've been doing before also built Go, into yeah, that. For sure. So. Like, being outdoorsy, being active. Mm-hmm. Um, being very connected to your body. Yeah. Yeah, basically, pretty yeah. much the whole the whole time. Yeah, finding finding ways to move. Yeah, <laughs> and connect. Yeah, you're you're amazing with how you built your life, and I really admire you for being yourself like that. Thanks. And yeah, <laughs> I don't know how else to do it. And my last question is for anybody who wants to take your classes or you know wants to learn from you. Yeah, where can they find you? Well, How do we get to you? Here at Warrior Bridge, there are some Zoom online classes still. Um, that's the only thing that I'm teaching online currently. I'm teaching two flexibility classes and a press conditioning class um, through Warrior Bridge. If you are in New York, I'm teaching at a whole bunch of places. Um, Warrior Bridge, Body and Pole, uh, Vital, which is a rock climbing gym, and soon to be another friend of mine is opening another pole studio where I'm going to teach pole and handstands. Wow. Uh, full circle Brooklyn. Yeah. So I'm teaching my classes, a whole bunch, a whole bunch of classes all over the city. Um, the easiest way to find me is on Instagram, um, which is lithium kitten. My cat's name is lithium, which is yay. that's where it comes from. That was going to be another question. Yeah. My cat's name is lithium. Um, and also Samantha mm-hmm. I finally got my shit together and put a website together. Um, <laughs> we will definitely put the link down below. To yeah. That. Um, but I think that the, honestly, the best way to connect is through Instagram. And the thing that I like most about Instagram and most, most about social media is connecting with people. Yeah. And most of it honestly is through handstands. Like it's through pole to some degree as well, because I've been able to tour and visit different pools, pool, uh, pole studios and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of the handstand people that I know are because of Instagram and yeah. they're like, I follow you. Hey, I'm in your town. I'm in your country. Uh-huh. Let's train. Um, or if people come through New York, Hey, I'm in New York, let's hang out. And it's been really cool to just be like, Hey, you like the thing that I like, let's do that thing together outside where it's awesome and have an experience. 
Yeah. And it's it's been really cool. So hit me up on the internet. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's kind of a unique thing to the handset community on Instagram is that it's so easy. The funny thing is that it is and it's not unique at the same time. Oh, really? I think that like pole dancing is the same thing. I can literally travel oh. anywhere in the world. I can post, hey, I need a place to crash and there'll be people that will reach out with information. Oh, good to know. <laughs> so, um, but I think a lot of like smaller niche communities it depends on like how that community is though. Mm-hmm. I definitely think like handstand people are are good people. So that also helps. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm also not shy about being like, hello, I don't know you, but can I crash at your house? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you ever go back to Austria, I, you probably get provided with a place. Well, to it, stay depends, it depends on where in Austria, right? So, well, yeah, <laughs> you're welcome to stay at our place anytime. We don't have any doors it's all open nice okay (laughs) so you have to be comfortable with that cool but we have bathroom doors one day i will (laughs) travel overseas again yeah i don't know i don't know when i'm gonna travel overseas yet that's still that's the one that i'm like oh i want to but i just i'm not ready yet um i'm barely ready to like travel around the u.s so i'm doing two small trips in september we'll see how it goes um yeah i don't know we'll see if if touring and traveling I don't think it'll ever be the same as it was Mm -hmm. but I think it'll come back in a different form so I'm interested to see kind of how that happens and how it Mm -hmm. it morphs and who I get to meet who I get to see again definitely interesting times yeah yeah well thank you so much for meeting with me and talking to me and I've been admiring you forever it's so nice to meet you yeah (laughs) it's so great to meet you you're a pleasure Yay. <laughs> and thank you so much for watching. And if, if you have any questions that are left, post them down below and maybe we can answer them. And otherwise, it's never too late to do what you love. True. <laughs> That's what I always say at the end of the video. Nice. And it's really true. It's definitely, definitely the truth. So yeah, see you next Monday. <laughs>